All right, let's get rolling here now. Gerald's ready to record. I won't keep you guys uh, too long. Uh, we're going to have another conference call next week. Um, but uh, let's go over the new algo you guys are going to be uh, uh, receiving. And then also this is the algo you have in your hands right now. You have this uh, in your hands. You can make it exactly like my workspace right now. So let's go first of all, let's touch base on how to use the indicator and then automation with the indicator. So let me get this off here first of all. Hold on. It's our cleaner. One second. Here we go. Okay, so we blow this up. Hey, Thomas. Good evening. So if you notice the post, I'll post it right here for you. Hey, Phil. Good evening. So 3:32 today, I posted possible extreme Momo, and before that, if you go back, I said power hour. Let's see if we get a surge, right? So when you the reason I wanted to post that for you guys, and we had a huge rally after I posted it, um, is that um, there we go. So 332 right here at this level, when the market was these red bars, I said, it's power hour. What's power hour? Power hour, a, a lot of traders like to trade in the last hour of trading period they like to trade the first hour of trading 9 30 to 10 30 and they like to trade the last hour of trading and that is from 3 to 4 p.m the power hour jerry are you ready to go are you recording just give me a why make sure we're recording this hold on one sec because i want to show these charts Hey, Gerald, are you recording? All right, I assume he is. Okay, anyway, so I assume we're recording. Uh, the power hour is the last 30 minutes of trading. The last uh, uh, typically one hour trading. I like the last 30 minutes of trading, and I like the last 10 minutes of trading. The last 10 minutes, you see a lot of window dressing by institutions, by uh, these algorithms, and so on. So. Uh, okay, I got you, Gerald. Thank you. So when I posted, you can see I posted it, 332, possible extreme MOMO. So at this level, right there, when it would form the doji, why did I say a possible bull MOMO, and why did I post power hour? Let's see if, there's a, if we get a surge. What happens is, in the last hour trading, we typically get a nice little surge in the market, whether it be up or down. And in the last 10 minutes of the trading session, you get a nice surge also. So from here, from this point here until 3 o'clock, a lot of traders that trade individual stocks, futures, etc., they love this last power hour, right? And then the last 10 minutes, you'll see an extreme possible surge continuation in that last 10 minutes right there also that's when you see a lot of surge in volume so if you see and this is what I got excited about and that's why I posted in the room possible extreme momo if I see an extreme momo meaning bull momentum trade and I'm in power hour which is 3 p.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern or I see an extreme momo from 9.30 to 10.30, and it can go all the way to 11 o'clock, pretty much 9.30 to 11. I don't like to really trade Momos after a certain point, but it even works all the way through. It actually works 23 out of 24 hours a day if you line the charts up right. But if you see the power hour we come in and you see a bull Momo, you got to get excited. So when I posted that, what was I looking at? So at 8.32, between this red bar, this doji and this red bar, I posted, look for a possible extreme Momo. Well, this morning, um, we did a video, go back to daytradingthefutures.com, and I did a whole video how to project these bull Momos, or bear Momos, bear momentum or bull momentum. 
very simply, price, there has to be two characteristics. Price has to be above the shallow retracement. Right here, here's our shallow retracement. And then price has to be above the bull, which is 40. So it's got this oscillator had to stay above this area right here, the bull momo. It had to stay above here. Right there, bull momo. All right. So you want to see it stay above that when you turn back to a green momo or the arrow automatically fired. So we had an arrow that automatically fired. All those that you leased the program, this audible alert should have went off on your computers. That audible alert should have alerted you at 4198 and a quarter. It should have fired off on your on sound on your computer. 4898 and a quarter. I mean uh, 4198 and a quarter. That told you I'm above the shallow retracement, which is right here. That's the only time you want to look for momentum setups. My oscillator, and that's the reason I posted that before it even took off, was down at this level. It's pointing straight down to 65. Right at 65. I was looking for extreme MoMA to turn here at 60, I mean 80. I don't want it to go below 65, though, if there's going to be extreme momentum in power hour. Power hour is where you get this big surge of momentum. You have a lot of institutional push in the last. If you talk to any institutional trader or anybody that's been a trader before on the institutional side, they'll tell you power hour is where they like to push the market. It's either 9.30 to around 10.30, all the way up to 11, or it's that last hour of trading, whether you trade stocks, futures, etc. So when the oscillator, when we were moving up, we turned green. What happened is we busted through an order block. So at power hour at 3 o'clock Eastern, remember these order blocks are huge resistance and support levels. We busted right through an order block. That is a huge warning that we're going to have a big push. And we talked about this this morning. We had several trades like that this morning. So once you get through that level, as far as this level goes, and we are going to go over the automation, so don't worry, but I want to make sure you understand the indicator to know how to do the automation or it's not going to work very well for you. You need to understand how this works. So if you get through the order block, which we did, we start moving up. As soon as that oscillator, that doji came in, and I saw that oscillator dipping, I typed in the room, and I just posted it right there, possible extreme momo. And I, see, I put power hour, let's see if we get a surge. This happens over and over and over and over again during the day session and during the power hour at 9.30 to the 11 era, uh, era, uh, area. And actually around the clock if you watch the setup. The key characteristic is we need to stay above the shallow retracement. So when you're, if you want to do automation and you only want to look for momentum setups, you want to make sure your oscillator down here is at an extreme level. Let me repeat myself. If you're strictly looking for, and I'm going to show you examples of the NASDAQ futures today on some trades it took on extreme MOMOs. If you are looking for extreme MOMO trades, you need your oscillator to be pegged above minimum 65 for, for buys and minimum below 35 for sells. I prefer above 80 for buys and I prefer below 20 for sells. And you can I'll show you how you can put that in. So what you can do then is that since it's moving up and then I post in the room we're looking for an extreme momo right before it happened right here and right here two minutes later Two minutes later, we get a green reversal bar, the arrow fires, and the oscillator stays above the bull momo. More importantly, it stays above the 65. So let me jot this down for you to understand. So extreme, extreme by momos, momo, shallow retrace, it has to be above shallow retracement, has to be, or these do not work out very well unless your your zones are in the right place. Above, shallow, zone, then the retrace, which is the officer color bars, or a doji, 
then the bull line staying above 80. That's extreme. A standard bull buy, it just has to stay above 40. So a bull pullback, bull buy Momo, above shallow zone, then the retrace, then the bull line above at least 40, prefer 65 where the bear is. But as long as it stays above 40, you're good to go. Okay, so this was a, a bull momentum. I love when it stays above 65. It means you, you possibly got a big surge. So the first stop is here at 80, then 65, but it's got to stay above 40. If it dissipates, and we saw setups like that today where they weren't setups, and you cut right through there, you cut right through this 40 bull, bull momo, and this has not turned a green reversal bar and the arrow hasn't fired, it's not a setup. Let it go. Okay? Now, what you can do is use different support and resistance to understand if there's going to be a power surge to the upside or downside. So when you cut through that order block, you cut through an order block, which is that thin cyan line. That's a previous major supply line. When you cut through it and you get a pause in the market like this, and that oscillator is staying above, you're 80 for an extreme, 65 would be above the bear. It's still an extreme to me, not an extreme extreme, but it's still a, a great setup. But it's got to at least stay above 40, okay? If you want to do automation then, and if you want to have this on automation, what you can do is we can see that here's my 40, 60 lines, right, on a blank chart. You can let this thing, I'll show you when you get, I showed you how to do strategy runner also already to find your settings. We, we our strategy, I'm sorry, strategy analyzer. Strategy runner is what I used to use, sorry, for my automation. A strategy analyzer. I showed you how to use that already, and we will go over it again. I showed you how to do market replay already. That's in the previous videos. Now I'm going to show you how you can arm this and disarm it. What does that mean? Well, I wanted to show you that you can, you can, you can project when this thing's possibly going to fire Momo, and that's why I did this and I typed it in the room before this happened. So what I did to show traders you can project this stuff, it's not after the fact, I typed in, and there it is on the bottom, at 332, possible extreme MOMO, right there. So if you think there's a possible extreme MOMO, and how you do it is, is it's got to be above green for zone. It's got to be above the green zone. It has to be above this zone, right? It can't be deeper into this danger zone. Price has to be above the shallow zone. If the oscillator is above at least 40, you're still good. But if it's right at, and it was hugging right here on this red bar. I was watching it right there. That's why I typed it in. It's hugging it for an extreme MOMO. Came down a little bit more, at least above 65, and it fired in the trade. My point is you can arm your system with automated entries where you just go in. Let me get this out of the way. You go in. And you have this ready to go. And here's the top. Here's the here's the micros. There's four contracts ready to go. All you do is click on this once. Once it, you click on it once, this will turn green over here. Once it's turned green, it is armed. The fill that would have filled you at, because an extreme MOMO is 98 and a half. Okay, the trail that I have a trail built into this thing because this is a 20 Rinko bar, 20 Rinko um, entry, I mean 20 Rinko bar type, sorry, size, it got as high as 42 and 9 a quarter. So that was from a 98 and a half to an 09 a quarter trade. And I have a thousand ticks out on all these. So that's a thousand ticks out. So what it'll do, it will keep holding this as long as you don't close below this trail, which I have a trail of, I believe, 22 or 23 on this. I have it right below the bar, the, the Renko size, and then right when it closes below, which you did here, it's going to 
get get you out. This works very well by arming this and disarming it in power hour and from 9.30 to 10.30. Listen, some traders want to trade this automation around the clock, and I'll show you how you can do strategy analyzer to find optimal setups like that. But I just showed you ahead of time how, how you can project, and I did it this morning also, and I did it yesterday before the trades even came up. I showed you how if you, and we're going to keep doing this every week, I'm going to show you when this oscillator is staying above, and this staying above, it's right at it, and it was staying above right at our 80 mark, and I'm having a retracement, and I'm above my shallow retracement already, you can arm your, you can arm your system right there for an automated trade. Because right here you can see it was hanging above the 40 mark. You can put it on the strategy also. You can disconnect it after the trade and just wait for the next setup. So what I'm saying is the misconception with the automation is this. And let me clear this up. A lot of traders, and I get feedback from traders who have the system, a lot of traders will arm this when there's a possible setup come up. And, and traders go, well, how can you project when a setup comes up? Well, I just did. I did today, I did yesterday, and I just did today, and I posted it in the room, and there's my timestamp. I did it right here. So what you can do, even if it's going to be a stop out, because your stops are going to be your trailing stop loss, even if it's wrong, when you arm this, and you arm it, and it's on, on, ex on a possible extreme MOMO, or especially I, if you do this arm and disarm way, what you're doing is you're telling yourself your stop's in because your stop is this trailing stop loss. One, your stop's in. Two, your trailing stop in. It's going to keep trailing price for the market surge on power hour 9.30 to 11. You get some, some nice trades. If you want a real tight stop, just keep it right below your Rinko size that you use. Do you have to use a 20 Rinko size? No. You can do the same thing on the 13. Okay. I like doing this on the 113, 13 also. But what I do is I, I don't keep it as tight on my bars, my Rinko bars. I widen it up, right? You can widen it to an 18 or a 20 trail if you want to get it to breathe a little bit because uh, the 13 sort of gyrates around a little bit. My point is, is that that's one way how you can do it using automation and using the indicator at the same time. And I, try to I wanted to do this conference call to relay that because we have traders that love to do this and it makes sense. So what I thought about doing is I'm going to start doing this in the room. I'm going to show you when a possible setup like today and yesterday, and we're going to start looking at, and like when I posted at 332, possible extreme MOMO, we're going to look when this oscillator is coming down into retracement above shallow. And we're going to watch this thing on how we can arm the system to do an automated trade. Now, some of you won't want to do automated trades. That's fine. Automation has its pitfalls just like uh, anything else. If you just turn this thing on and you walk away and you want to go mow the lawn or go on your boat or do whatever you want to do, you come back, it may be disastrous because you're not watching the system. Your internet could go down. The, your ninja trader could stall. And it, it, there's a lot of things that could happen. But if you do your due diligence and you start doing it this way, you can clearly see that once you arm it and you're filled, it, it will fill. So if you armed it right when I posted that, right, you arm when I posted that, it would have filled at 98 and a half and it would have trailed with a 22 trail all the way up. And this would have been 98 and a half all the way into the close at 4210 or just below it. So that's one way we can use automation by knowing the setups. And this is what I, I tell traders all the time is that, you have to know the setup. If you don't know how to manually trade this setup, then it's not going to help you to fine tune your automation. Because what I know about this automation, I know that shallow retracements works best with this automation as far as momentum trades. I know this based upon 30 years of, of, of back testing. We know that the momentum is the best setup as far as if the oscillator is above a certain level. We know if it's above 80, it's pegged. If it's above 65 there, it's still pegged. If we get below that, it's still a bull trade, but if it ever gets below 40, then 
we cannot take the momentum trade at all. All right, so this is a way for traders, what you can do is if you see that we're coming down, we're moving up. I mean, we're moving up, we're above our, we're above our, um, we're above our shallow retracements. Once this prints, right there is when I typed in the room, look for an extreme MOMO. And two minutes later, it arms it within a matter of seconds. That's when you can start participating in these moves. The one thing that by trading this way, it's going to help traders that get nervous about trades and they don't know how to do their trails. So this is a good way for it to trail your position because it moves so fast in between here. Can you hardly keep up? Market was just jamming. It was cranking. So this is a really good way for you to understand. Now, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to not do automation and not arm it, right, then you can strictly wait for the arrow and the arrow will produce a audible sound. So once this is produces an audible sound, here's another way you can do it. If this produces an audible sound and there's an arrow that fired, we know it's an extreme MOMO or a bull MOMO right above 65 or above 80. What you can do is you can trail, your stop is going to be below the swing low. So if you use a 20 Renko, you better have around 21, 22 tick stop. If you have a 13 Renko, you better have two ticks more than that, thir uh, probably 15 tick stop. And then every two bars, you can use Chart Trader and just keep moving up below the bar, the Renko bars. If you notice on the Renko bars here, guys, if you blow them up, it never breaks the previous two bars back or the low, right? It never breaks that low of the previous bar. The trend is hard intact. So if you look all the way up on that buy signal, it held that low all the way up until here. The red came in. It actually broke below the low of that doji. So then it turned red. And knowing that, we can use that to trail if you're manually entering these trades, right? Manually entering these trades, we can trail using that technique, all right? So let's make sure we understand that, okay? It's a really neat way to do it. Uh, bear is just the opposite. Uh, bear is here where you get, come to the shallow retracement. Below 65 here, this shot, the other chart shows a little bit better today. Now let me go, go into the NASDAQ futures and show you how to mess with automation. So let's make sure we go to daytradingthefutures.com and click on this morning's video. Because this morning's video, it tells you exactly how to trade a bull MOMO versus an extreme MOMO. And then a bear extreme MOMO and how to trade a bear MOMO by itself. But essentially, what we're trying to do here, once we get a trend change, we go from red zones to green zones. As soon as we turn into green zones, we're looking to buy only. If we have red zones, we're looking to short only. Because these zones are critical for trend. Now, the key is this. If you see these two little markups here, and I'll color code them, the first one is the shallow zone, and the second one is the deeper zone. So that's shallow, and this is deep. Why is that important? Just like that projection I gave on that trade of a possible extreme MOMO blow-off rally into the close of day, which happened, you need to know if you get into a deep zone, these momentum trades tend not to work. What I'm saying is, is that if you stay above these three zones, if price is above these three zones, these three lines that are zones, see how it comes right down to it and launches off of it? Comes down to it, launches off of it. If you stay above that, you want to look for these arrow buys and be in an extreme bull above 80, a bull, which is 65, this is what we had at the close, exact same one at the close. It was a beautiful setup. It just cannot go below 40. 
then if you are above the shallow retracement and your oscillator holds above minimum 40, at least 65, 80 is the best because it's going to be pegged north. You're looking for a big push. It doesn't have to be a red reversal bar here to show its retracement. It can be a doji, a doji forms. You'll see these arrows automatically fired on your computer systems today. They fired audible alerts here, audible alert there, audible alert there, audible alert there, audible alert here. All of them fired on your ninja traders who have released the program off this, off this um, 113.13. I'm using this as a this is a 113.13, okay? What happens if you start getting deep into the zone? You start closing now below this third line. That is called an F FZR zone, this zone. This is a danger zone. Momentum trades are off. Most traders, and if Derek, you're in here, I don't think Derek's in here. He's one of our top momentum traders in the room that just, he is an animal at trading momentum with this oscillator. And with these zones, I mean, he's on fire. You see him just, he takes almost all the trades. If you notice when he posts over the last two, two, three years, he's just on top of it. But he doesn't even like getting into this zone. So when it comes to the zone, right, if Derek is only trading momentum, then he would not take any trades in this zone at all. Because this is what's called a danger zone or a FCR V, v bottom or V top. What happens, as you notice, we start closing inside of the zone here. What happens? The market does a what? It does a trend change. That's when you go from green right back to red, just like it did here, trend change, right? Now it went from green to red. This one went from red to green. So you can see the difference, how it works out. That's a trend change right there. All right, and it right right into an extreme momo, and then right into a bear sell-off. Right, so but look at the oscillators. Go back to the oscillators, and then I'm going to go into how when you when you start wanting to automate this, you can one like I showed you here about 15 minutes ago, arm it and disarm it, having all your preset targets already in. You don't have a thousand targets for one, two, three, four contracts. You don't have to even trade one, two, three, four in automation. You can do one contract if you want. There's a way to change that. Two contracts, three contracts, and four contracts. I'll show you how to do that tonight. But the point is, is that when you start understanding why price is moving the way it's moving, then you can arm the automation to let it do the work for you and the trail for you. Or if you find settings that you like, you can let it trade from a certain amount of hours to a certain amount of hours. All right, and I showed you how to back test that through strategy analyzer, and we'll go over it again as we progress through the weeks, and I showed you how to do that through market replay, okay? But if we look here at this one, this is exactly what happened at the close today. It was a bull, the oscillator pulled back, so as we pull back, the oscillator pulled back, I'm above my shallow retracement, look at my shallow retracement, Come on, move. There you go. I'm above. I'm, I'm above my shallow retracement here. Check. My oscillator pull back. Check. It's above 40 minimum. Check. The arrow fired. My audible alert. Check. That is a buy. Right there. So as you pull back here, you can set your automation and say, hey, I don't want to take any buys on a pullback unless I'm above let's say 65 right here I don't want to take any buys less above 65 and that's what it was here this was 65 it was set at 65 so this was set at 65 so it said if this pulls back on automation and it pulls back more than 65 on this oscillator and I break through this 65 right here and I get a green reversal bar, it will not take a trade on the automation. And that's what you need to understand. Whatever threshold you put in, that's the threshold it's going to execute. So whatever threshold you put in, that's the threshold it will execute. 
So this one, I have a 65 just to show you because we were in a bull run. We're in a bull run. So when you want to arm it, right, when I post in the room here, that possible look for a Momo, you can arm it and say, hey, I don't want anything below 65. You see 65 right there. Bull, 65. Bull, 65. You can put the exact number in you want it to at least take a trade on. So because what I want to do, if I want an extreme momentum setup, I don't want to go below 65. I, I'd love it if it stays above 80. But even if it comes down 65, I'll still want to get in that setup because that's characterized as a blow-off rally. Okay? And so you want to arm that with your trail and so on. All right, so that's how we can do that. You can you can use this automation with the indicator knowing when you're going to get a pullback with shallow zones or deep zones. Okay? So, let's move on. Hey, Sal, how's it going, buddy? So, what you can do then is you can put in here under, under the Momo, so you can put in that I don't want to take any shorts above 35 and I don't want to take any shorts below 65. So what you're telling yourself when you arm that, when you arm that, you're telling yourself it won't take any trades on a pullback. Now it was a bull run up. I put a thousand target on each one of these thousand, thousand, thousand. The stop doesn't mean anything. I put it way out because your stop's going to be your trail. I keep it tight to the 20 on surges, on, on power momos. You can do that real tight for a tight stop. So you can keep it 22, 21, 20. You can, get, you can even go all the way down to 20 if you want. It's going to keep it real tight. That's just inside of the bar on the edge. Your trail. Your bull bears check. I'm going to go over that bull bear in a second explain those to you in a sec. But see, you can keep it real tight if you like when there's an extreme setup coming in. Right there. Oh, my goodness, Sal. Two strokes. Are you okay, buddy? Are, are you recovering? My goodness gracious. Hey, Godspeed, man. Get healthy. Get healthy. Yeah, my brother had a full bypass one time, and whew, and my wife's uh, uh, dad, I'm sorry, had a full bypass. So I feel you, buddy. Full recovery. What I'm doing over going over now, Sal, I'm going over how you can automate on looking for momentum. So what what I did in the close, I'm showing, and I've been doing this in the room and we're going to continue to do this in the room, is at 3.32 today, I want to show traders how they can use automation with projecting when a possible moment is coming in. That's what I typed in the room at 3.32. So 3.32 today, I saw a possible Momo coming up, extreme Momo. So what you can do is you can arm it. You can have your trail already set in. This is a 20 trail, really tight. And you can click and arm it when you think a possible trade setup is coming. Now, there's a way I showed you on Strategy Analyzer and Strategy Runner. You can run it around the clock, which we'll go over. But a lot of traders are going to love to do it this way. They're going to like to arm it when they see a possible setup coming up. So you can arm it, and it takes a couple seconds to come on. And then the fill would have been 98 and a half. And it brought it all the way into the close when I typed that in the room before it happened. So we can use automation knowing when a possible Momo is going to happen. And we know the best times are when this happens. When we are at an extreme shallow, I mean, we're above shallow retracements. So all big trends, and I put them on here, Sal, since uh, you've been in the hospital here a little bit. Anything above this shallow retracement right here. Anything above this shallow retracement with the oscillator staying above 40 is an, is an extreme buy. 
Hey, I'm, I'm glad you're getting better, bud. We, we, we look forward, you, forward to you come back in the room. Get healthy, man. Get healthy. So if we stay above, if we stay above the shallow retracement zones, and we get an extreme reading on our oscillator, that arrow will fire then, and that's where the automation will get in. Wherever these arrows fire to make it easy for you, that's where the automation is going to get you in. All right? But when you're manually doing it, you can turn automation on and off if you want, just by double-clicking on your control center. Because you have your targets preset, you got your targets preset right here. Let's take a look inside this thing. You can dictate where your bull and bear is. So bear, I can say, uh, let's say you want to do the standard what I like to do. Bear below 65, bull above 40. Right? You can do that. Let's say you just want to straight, strictly trade momentum trades. Moment, let's say you want extreme momentum trades. You can put the bull, the bear below 10, and the bull above 90. Now you're telling it, listen, I want extreme blow-off rallies and blow-off sell-offs. Because if you tell it this, then that oscillator can barely pull back only to 90. Or the bear can only pull back to 10. If you want to take all trades and you said, hey, I just want to take every single trade. I just want to see what the what the automation would do by taking every trade. You go 99 to 1, and you turn this thing on. Now, obviously, you wouldn't do this unless you found a setting you really like, a market that is rangy. If you did that, it's going to take every single trade out there, right? It's going to take trade after trade after trade after trade. It'll take trades all day long. So the key for us is to do what? Let's find the most optimal level for us for a bull and bear. So let's get in here and let's find settings. And you can do this on Strategy Analyzer to help you out per market you look at. So if I know that I want, I'm in a bull run up, and I at least I want it to be above, let's say 65, right? At least 65. And you're looking for just bull runs. You put 65 and one if you wanted. You put your targets all the way out, a thousand, thousand all the way out. There's your stop because the stop is irrelevant because it's going to get you out with the trail. And your bull bear toggle switch has to be checked. So you can arm and disarm this right when this oscillator is pulling back, like I did in the room. Before it happened, I saw the oscillator pull back here to the red. I saw we got a doji, and that immediately, immediately alerts me, you better arm the system if it's not armed. Because then your preset trails in, your preset target, if you want to go 1,000 ticks and let this thing just run, or you can have 20, 40, 60, 80 tick targets. It'll still trail. It'll keep hitting those targets until the last trail is hit. Okay, so that's something you can preset and do. You can dictate where the threshold is based upon this, based upon this knowledge that I, I did an extremely important video this morning you should, you should look at, right? Let's say this, though. Let's say you want the automation to take this trade right here. That's an extreme bull. What level is that? 91. So that's 91. So that tells me if I go back and I put in 91, what time was that? That was, I mean, above 90, it's going to only take extreme blow-off rallies, 90 bull, or extreme blow-off sell-offs below 10. Or you can put 91 if you want. 91, so it doesn't even mess with the bear at all since you're in a bull and up uptrend. In case you get a big push down the market or something. That's what I like to do, but you can leave it in 35 or 40, whatever you want on the bear. So then, if you just want to take extreme readings right here, and not even these deeper pullbacks, you can do that based upon 
the algo. All right, because the algo, where's it at? My algo go. Oh, there it is. Hold on. So what you could do is then what you can get in and you can take 90 extreme readings, 90 and 10. So the bull would be 90. Anything above 90 then would be a bull. And then you can arm it if you see a possible bull or bear setup. Put the 13 up. I'll put the 13 up for you. Hold on one second, I'll show you. You can use this on all Rinko sizes, arm and disarm, any Rinko size you want. Let me show you this setup where you can cherry pick your trades on which ones you want to do. What was that 1020? Yeah, so so what you can do then, you can just do extreme arm it, disarm it. Let's say you see this doji come up, and, and here's how, this is when you want to arm it, guys, and disarm it. If you see a doji come up, or a red reversal bar, and this thing is pegged, it's pegged, right here when this doji came up, it's pegged, that's how I, I projected this at, at the 332 for the big rally. It's pegged above 80 right now, right? It's pegged. Arm your system. You can arm your system, and you already got. It will take the first green re, or, or, or qualified reversal bar that's qualified. The first qualified reversal bar is going to get you long. And wherever your trail's at, this is a 22. You can make it tighter if you want. So I can make this tight. I can make it to a 20 if you want. But it's going to get you long. But you can see how you can dictate. Oh, there's a 20. I'm sorry, this is a 13. So you can bring it down to maybe even a 15 trail to keep it really tight. I will go 18. So what I'm going to show you over the next month or so, like I did on that big rally at the close today, how you can use this automation and arm it to your advantage because of the projection. And if it doesn't show a Momo, it won't fill because you got your parameters preset. Your trails are already preset. So that's a nice trade on a 113.13. 81, 81 to 89. Why? Because you're trading an extreme oscillator. And what if you just broke out a market profile, broke through a, a uh, what if you broke through a um, order block? You know, and you want to get long, you can arm it and disarm it, okay? So that's what the advantage uh, you have of knowing when these setups come up. So please play that video this morning. I go over in great detail. I sent charts out too. Let's get into letting this thing run around the clock then. What if some of you want to just run this thing around the clock and say, hey, I want to arm it, disarm it. It's a pain in the tush. I just want to let this thing trade, let it do its thing. I found a good setting for a particular market. And I just want to let it get in and get out of the market. All right, you can do that. Let me show you how. So if you're going to do something like that, let's just take today's trading on the NASDAQ futures. If you do something like this, now this is the NASDAQ. I doubled the Rinko size because NASDAQ futures are fast. Man, they are quick. So you don't have a chance to arm and disarm really quick. If you trade the NASDAQ to arm and disarm when a Momo's coming up, I educate 35 or 40 Rinko because it moves so fast. But if you find that you want to automate it and let the automation go, I would stick to a higher Rinko if you want strictly automation. This is a 140.40. We talked about this last week a little bit. It's a 140.40. And the same thing. It's it's automated now. So when you do automation, you can do the same thing. So let's just look at today's data. And we'll go back. 
if you want to keep tight automation, this is a Momo cell. This is a Momo cell. Here, we'll look at. Here, I'll throw this thing up here real quick. Here, let me throw the uh, oscillator up here real quick for you. Actually, I can do it with this one. One second. I want to show you how you can see where possible setups are occurring. Where they come up, you can arm it or you can let this thing do its own thing. But arming and disarming, it's pretty easy. Usually it's a double click. You're on and off pretty much in less than five seconds if it's slow. If it's fast, you're on in a couple seconds. You have a fast connection. But then your 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 stops, your targets, and your trails are already preset. So let's get into this real quick. One second. Like I said, um, I'll, I'll, we'll continue to show you how to use strategy analyzer with it and show you how to use market replay on these, how you can dictate strength and weakness when you're trying to buy or sell these markets. Because this works on all futures, all stocks, all currency, all Forex. And you can dictate what Momo you want to trade. You want to trade extreme momos, you want to trade deeper pullback momos, it's totally up to you. And you can see the performance based upon that momentum setup, based upon the algo. Wait one second, I just got to change this. Let me, S &P. Okay, one second. There we go. Okay. All right, so when we're doing these trades, one second, let me make sure I get this right. When we're looking at these setups, you can look for whatever momentum that you desire. Whether I like a standard way to start it is 40, 60, or even better, you can go 50, 50 if you want. But it's just a good way to have a starting point to see what we're doing. So let's look at today's movement here. NASDAQ futures. Yeah, I got the oscillator on there now. So let's say the NASDAQ futures, you slow it down by doing a larger Renko bar. So when we're moving up, right, we're moving up, and let's say we're above our shallow retracement, and it's all green on our shallow retracement, and here's your oscillator, it's moving, it's moving. As soon as you see the first doji, right there, first doji. And this oscillator, we gotta be green, or you can have this, uh, on this one, your moving averages have to be in this direction, which I don't have the MAs on here, but I have a 20 and 110. And the 20 and 110 crossed here, that's why it took this trade. So your 20 and 110 must be crossed, which it did. But right when that doji comes up, watch your oscillator. See how I project that trade at the close of the day. Look at your oscillator. If it is pegged above, as it's going down, straight down, if it's pegged above 80, you can arm your system. Arm your trail. Arm your entry by double-clicking on it. So you can simply go in. You simply go in, not that one, here we go. Simply go in, and let's say this right here. You see it, the oscillator is holding above. It's not below 40. You're still good. It's hanging above 80, which is very, very positive. You want to arm it. You can arm it, 
and then when it pulls back, the same thing. You're going to be armed, ready to go. Right when it turns, it'll get you in the best available price, and then it'll start trailing. If you don't want to arm it and disarm it back and forth, find settings that work for you. Find settings that work for you, meaning the best that I have found with this on momentum is A, you got to be in below shallow retracements, and B, you better be above at least 65 for buys for mo strong momentum and at least below 35 for sells. Your extreme rallies and sell-offs will be above 80 for buys and below 20 for sells. All right, so this one, as we work our way through, another setup that happened, you can see here on the strategy, let me get into it. I'm going to show you a good starting point for you guys. I just put 50-50. I put 50-50. The bear is below 50 and the bull is above 50 to make it easy for a good starting point for you. 1,000 ticks on four contracts, stops at 50 above my ATR trail 40. Just to keep it simple. Bull bears on. All right, so what that means, today's trading on the NASDAQ futures on 140.40, is this an extreme MOMO? Yes. Is it below 50 or even better below my 65? But let's say you want it only extreme MOMOs. And this is below what? 24. Now, if I put 25 to only take 25 extreme MOMO cells, put 25 in there. And it still took this trade, but it won't take a lot of additional trades. So this one's strictly looking for 50-50 right now. So let me put the 50-50 up. So you understand why it's taking the trades. It's doing what it's doing. So put that there. There. This is sell. I had a retracement. My officer is below 50. It got short. It trailed. Next trade. This is a stop. Now let's look at stops. It's very important you look at stops. So what happened was, was the 50 came in right when we reversed. It barely got in right on this bar. That's why it stopped out. So this can happen sometimes. I'm going to show you this real quick. You can adjust this. So if you don't want it right at 50 or 40 or what have you, you notice it turned, it turned right at the 50 mark. So it actually got long because it's reading the oscillator down here. All right, so if that happens, adjust this because this one, it kind of broke through 50 a little bit. Adjust that. That means it was right on it. Adjust it. Make sure you adjust it. Let's take a next, next one. Here's a trail. A little 50. Trail. These are where the trails work really good. If you look at the trails right here, this is an extreme MOMO. So if you want to just take extremes, so let's just take a look at the performance on this thing today anyway. So this is the micros. Micros. Uh, this is on four contracts. This is 417 to 418. So literally just one day of trading. Um, it'll encompass some of the trades yesterday, but all of them. But just to show you how you want to look at this, uh, this is your max drawdown. This is your profit factor. That's very important for you to understand. Your profit factor, I'd like it to be three, four, five, somewhere around that range. Um, after everything's said and done, um, you want a good large reward to losing trade. Largest losing trade was $13 on four contracts. Largest winning trade was 73 Now, these are the micros. So if I change the micros to the big contract, take that times 10. It was $8,580, right? But the max drawdown would be 100 on four contracts on the big contract on the NASDAQ futures. It would be 1,000, right? Let me make sure you understand. I'll show you that in a second. But the bottom line, trail is key, guys. When you're trying to optimize this, you can see all the top trades have something in common. I don't have this set to take that cell like that, but because I have a trend filter bit in. If I take my trend filter off, this is important too. It's going to take this trade. Watch. I have a 2110 trend filter. 
If I take that trend filter off, it's going to take that short because I got 50-50. Watch this. That's going to go short now. Take the short trade. The key is this when, you, when you're trying to optimize this, optimize this automation. All right? Gerald, give me about five more minutes and I'll wrap this up. The key is where is your oscillator? Where is your shallow retracement or deep retracement if you're using the wave, which I just showed you how to do a second ago? If you don't use the wave and you just use this as your automation, you use moving averages. So you can see moving averages now. Let's say moving averages, I took the moving average filter off. And here's the difference. Now I'm at 912, profit factor 490. I took the trend filter off, right? Still a good net profit. Remember, past performance is not indicative of future results, guys. I'll say that 10 times over. That's why you sign all the things that you sign. So make sure you understand that. This is four contracts on the micros. But it just shows you the difference between trend and non-trend. You can take you can do both. It won't take trend, it won't take this short if the oscillator, let's say you put the oscillator below 50, which it was as a sell, and this is a buy. If you take that trend filter back on, it's only going to go with the trend that you decide you want to take. So the, the Momo strategy will take it with moving averages, and Phil was talking about this today. If you click that, it's only going to go with the, that moving average trend, fast over the slow, slow over the fast. Where the automation with the zones here, it's got to stay above. It's got to be green zones. And oscillator both okay that's the difference between the zone trader and the momo trader all right this is still momo this is momo zone it, it gives you a little bit more parameters you have to go through okay so now if you come back in and we look at the performance on how we did today and yesterday it's lower than taking some counter trend trades so you can dictate what you want to do. And these are the micros, obviously. So we go, if we go back and look at these setups, if you put a thousand ticks out, guys, if you put a thousand ticks out, it's going to hold all your contracts until your trail is broken, your trail, or your hard stop, whichever is first. I like the trail. I don't think we even need a hard stop with these two programs because the trail gets you out if it closes below it. And the trail keeps you in runners like that. Okay, that's pretty much a break even on that one. The key for this to work are the runners. If you look at this, at this level, as soon as you see this and you're getting a shallow retracement and the oscillator is still above 80 and you got a red bar, Make sure, if you're trying to arm this or disarm it, to take this trade, make sure you keep it above a certain threshold. You know, this threshold was 65. So 65, which I love 65. You know how much I love 65? There's your threshold 65. I will keep this at 40 down here. So if you have 65 in your threshold, and it's coming down, and it's still above 65, and you're retracing, if that just keeps cranking through, it's not going to get long on automation when this reverses because your threshold 65. So it's very important to know your thresholds and know how the system trades. That's why I, I put in at 332 today, possible extreme MOMO, right? And then the market took off and exploded. All right, so you can see how that works. It's the same with all these trades. It's another one below the threshold, below the threshold that you put in. That's why it took it short. Okay? Here's below the threshold. This extreme OMO took it short. So that's how you can do it. But the key is this. You should already anticipate when these things come up. Just like I did right here. Right there. 
So if you go back, and like I said, you can look at it right at that level. I'm going to start teaching you guys how to do this. At 332, possible extreme low mode. 332 was this doji right there, right? Between the doji and this bar, right here, between this, this doji and this red bar right there. So what happened is, when I typed that in, this was pegged all the way on the red right there. That oscillator was right here. That's when I typed it in, right there. That's when you can arm your automation if you want it to arm. Because guess what? You already told your automation you don't want it to go below 65. So if it's wrong and it jets, and this thing just jets, it stays red bars, red bars, red bars, all the way down through, and price crashes through into this zone, the danger zone, it, algo never got you long. Guess what you do? Disarm the darn thing, right? Disarm it. Does that, make, does that make sense? Disarm it. So now we can arm and disarm based upon the knowledge I'm showing you with price action. And use automation to help you out. Or if you find something that you want to let it run a certain amount of hours during the day, that's fine. I think a lot of traders, once they understand, that's why I want to do it today. I did it yesterday. I did it today. I'll do it again today, uh, tomorrow. We're going to anticipate when there's a momentum set up coming up. And if I can do that, I can show you guys, you can in, in manually use Chart Trader to get in, or you can control your automation, which that's the best way to do it, because then you're watching it. You're there. You're hands-on. You understand why it's buying. You understand why it's selling. That's what we're going to continue to do. I'm going to show you how you can use both together. Okay?